Another set operation is the difference operation. So we can say, and this is just uses the subtraction operator. <clears throat> so we can say, what's the difference? A minus B. And uh, by the way, we'll do it first this way, and then we'll do it B minus A, because again, these are not the same thing. So A minus B means all elements of A minus the elements of B, anything that's in B. So we take all the elements of A, and then we subtract anything that's in B. So there's three is in B, so we take it out. Five is in B, but it's not in this one. Nine is in B, so we take it out. Eight doesn't matter, six doesn't matter, but four is in B, so we take it out. So this is all the elements in B, and then we take, I mean, all the elements of A minus any element that is also an element of B. Let's do it the other way, where we start with B, and then we subtract out any one that is an element of A. So we take out the four, we take out the nine, we take out the seven, there's not a seven, so I don't have to worry about that. We take out the three, there's no 14, and there's no 11. So B minus A, is equal to this set. Again, notice that the results of these set operations are sets themselves. So that's what the difference between two sets are. So A minus B are those three elements. B minus A are those three. And by the way, they don't need to be. You can subtract and get uh, different amounts. So A minus B might have six, and B minus A might have two. So there's no. this one did turn out that they're the same number, but that's not always the case. Now the symmetric difference, <clears throat> uh, oops, so notice it says symmetric. So this one is going to be the same. So let's try this. So this is A symmetric difference B. Now this, does this remind you of any operator we've used before? It looks a little bit like the XOR operator and it actually works like the XR operator. So this one is any element that is in C in A that's not in B, and any element in B that's in C. So it's all the elements of A and B, except the ones that are in both. So it can be in A, or it can be in B, but it can't be in both. So let's see what that looks like. So if we take all the elements in A, but it can't be in, except the ones that are, and all the elements in B, Right? So it's all the elements in A and all the elements in B except the ones that are in both. And so here we have 4 is in both, so we need to make sure and take it out. 9 is in both, so we need to be sure and take it out. And 3 is in both, so we need to take it out. All right, so these are all the elements that are in A and B but not in both. So now what happens if we do the opposite of that and we do B symmetric difference A, right? So here we have all the elements that are in B and all the elements that are in A, except, oops, except the ones that are in both. So three is in both, so we take that out. Uh, 9 is in both, so we take that out. 4 is in both, so we take that out. Now if we look at these, these are in a different order because I started with them in a different order. But notice that it has exactly the same elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements in both. They're the same, they're in just different orders. So this is equal to this. So that's what it means by being symmetric. This one, it doesn't matter which order you do them in because they're equivalent even when you turn them around. Okay, so A symmetric difference <clears throat> B is equal to B symmetric different difference A. A, very much like the XOR, it can be in that, it can be in A or B, but not in both. Now what about the complement? So now the A complement and the way that this is written, let me see if you can find it, is A with a bar above it. And so that's the complement of, that's really hard to do in this, in this tool. So I'm going to use all, our alternative that we used before, which is just the apostrophe. So A complement. 
Now to get the complement, what the complement is, it's all the elements in the universe except the one that's in A. Now remember how we talked about the universe is often never explicitly dis defined? Well, in this case, you have to explicitly define it or you don't know what you're working with. So it's, it's really all the elements in the universe except the ones that are in A. So we need to define the universe first. So let's say that the universe in this case is equal to um, all the numbers 1 through 12. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is the universe. Well, then the complement of A is everything in the universe except what's in A. So we can go ahead and go through the universe. 1 is not in A. 2 is not in A. 3 is in A, so we're not going to count it. 4 is in A, so we don't count it. Then there's 5, 6, 7, 8... And then 9 is in A, so we don't count it. And then there's 10, 11, and 12. So the complement of A is everything in the universe except what's in A. So three more set operations. The difference, the symmetric difference, and the complement. Now, there can be all kinds of combinations of these, right? So we have these three operations, plus we have the union and intersection. And you can put all of these together, um, multiple combinations. And again, when you combine these, they do make a difference which order you do them in. So however the um, operations are done, be sure and use parentheses to clarify which order you do them in. And then each operation produces a set. So you just find out what's that set, and then you can use the operation with that set, the result set. So um, you can use lots of different combinations.